Hurricane E, it is now considered to be a major hurricane and has officially made landfall in Cuba as it continues its move towards the Gulf of Mexico. The Category 3 storm is located over western Cuba and expected to intensify as it heads further north. Officials in Cuba have evacuated 50,000 people in one region, set up shelters, and taken steps to protect crops in warehouses as Cuba's main in main uh, tobacco growing region. The National Hurricane Center says the island's west coast could see as much as 14 feet of storm surge. The storm already brought a surge in heavy rainfall to the southeastern Cayman Islands, leaving widespread flooding in its wake. Also expected to bring hurricane force winds and heavy rainfall to much of southern and western Florida later this week. The U.S. Justice Department has submitted a slightly revised inventory of materials seized in the search of former President Trump's Florida home. The updated inventory submission is part of the special master review of the Mar-a-Lago materials. The DOJ also submitted an FBI affidavit indicating the new inventory fully reflects what was seized. The special master asked for the affidavit after Trump suggested that the FBI may have planted items during the search. Now, an agent quoted in the affidavit said the inventory changes were minor, by Friday, Trump must give the special master descriptions of seized items he claims are missing from the inventory or items he says were not at the premises. A historic moment last night as NASA successfully crashed a spacecraft into an asteroid. Two, one. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh wow. Awaiting visual confirmation. The double asteroid redirection test or DART slammed into the small asteroid Dimorphos to change its orbit. Although it's been done in movies, this was the first time it's ever happened in real life. The asteroid wasn't at risk of impacting Earth, but the test shows how to protect the planet from a potential threat in the future. It will take NASA time to determine whether the impact successfully changed the asteroid's orbit. In Russia, thousands of men continue to flee the country after President Putin called for an additional 300,000 troops for the war in Ukraine. This has protests in Russia continue to grow. ABC's Aika Jachi is in Washington with more. This morning, new images out of Russia showing a massive line of traffic between the border of Russia and Georgia, as well as neighboring Mongolia, as thousands of Russians continue to flee the country amid fears of being drafted to fight in the war in Ukraine. An independent Russian news outlet reports people are now waiting 40 to 50 hours in line to cross. In this video, Russian cars creating traffic at the Finland-Russia border, many Russians speaking out against Putin's war. And now, protests throughout Russia growing violent. In eastern Russia, a gunman entered a recruiting office, wounding an officer before taken into custody. At least 17 of these offices have been targeted in recent days. Now, in the Russian Republic of Dagestan, an area that's had an extremely violent separatist insurgency against Russian rule, people are seen taking to the streets and clashing with local police. Today is the final day of the staged referendum in occupied regions of Ukraine. Russia looking to formally annex several regions throughout Ukraine through fake elections. The White House calling those elections a sham. We stand with our partners around the world in rejecting whatever fabricated outcomes Russia announces. Meanwhile, Russia's attack on Ukraine continues. At least four people were injured from a Russian strike inside a residential region of the Donbass area. Ukrainian officials say Russians continue to use Iranian drones to carry out strikes across the country. There are fears that once Russia officially annexes these areas, possibly by the end of the week, Putin can use that as an excuse to escalate attacks in Ukraine. Aika Jachi, ABC News, Washington.